In this video, I'd like to talk a little bit about the lapse rate and stability in the atmosphere. Um, and in this lab, we'll be using the term air parcel. Um, and this refers to a part of the atmosphere that has relatively uniform temperature and relative humidity uh, and can be considered a parcel of air. And one concept or one way you can look at this is to consider uh, the air being contained in a balloon where uh, it has limited interaction with the surrounding atmosphere. So let's get right to it here. Um, the week before we did some experiments about gas laws and what we learned from the gas laws were some of the following things. One is we learned that with lower pressure, um, gases will expand. Uh, at higher pressures, when you subject gases to higher pressures, that results in compression uh, of the gas. And that makes kind of sense. Now, when gases expand, uh, when they're exposed to that lower pressure, they will also cool. There are fewer interactions and the temperature will drop. And when you have compression of gases, that will result in an increase in temperature. And these will be important concepts when we start talking about lapse rate and stability of the atmosphere. Um, so we'll be using these physical processes to better understand the behavior of air parcels and resulting weather processes. So last week we did lapse rates. We did vertical atmospheric profiles. And this is an example from Salem, April 15, 2013. That shows temperature on the horizontal axis and altitude in meters. And you can see the vary, it varies up to about 5,000 meters or so and then starts steepening and heating. And we located the tropopause around here and the heating due to the presence of ozone um, in the stratosphere. Um, so these temperature variations are called the lapse rate. And there are three types of lapse rates. The first type of lapse rate is called the environmental lapse rate, ELR, and this is what we did last, last week. It is the temperature variation with altitude. Um, so it describes how actual temperatures vary with altitude, and as we saw, these can change from day to day or even over the course of the day, and these can be used to help with prediction when you see the changes. The second type of lapse rate is called the dry adiabatic lapse rate. And adiabatic is a pretty big word, one of those words you can use at dinner parties to impress your friends. And basically it just means that a process, like rising air, does not exchange heat with the surroundings. And this is used frequently in atmospheric sciences. And it's also used in studying other Earth processes like the movement of magma through the crust. So the dry adiabatic lapse rate is the rate that the dry air will cool as it rises in the atmosphere. And this is a fixed rate of about 5.5 degrees Fahrenheit per thousand feet, or 10 degrees per thousand meters centigrade. And this diagram shows what happens at the bottom. You have 10 degrees a parcel of air. As it rises up to the atmosphere, it expands and cools a fixed rate, 10 degrees per centigrade. So it's zero, then minus 10, and then minus 20. So this is the dry adiabatic lapse rate. The next type is the wet adiabatic lapse rate. And this is in particular uh, application to the presence of clouds. So let's take a look at this one. So this is also called the moist adiabatic la lapse rate or the saturated adiabatic lapse rate. Um, and it's the rate at which saturated air uh, moves through the atmosphere. And we're going to use a value of 2.7 per uh, degrees Fahrenheit per thousand feet. And you'll see other uh, factors as well, but that's what we'll be using. Um, and we use this type or this lapse rate to help describe um, air movement within a cloud. And if we bring our attention over here to the diagram, here is the dry adiabatic lapse rate of 10 degrees per thousand meters and then once you get into the cloud you switch because the relative humidity is up to 100 now you switch to the moist or wet adiabatic lapse rate of five degrees and notice the change slows down now the reason why the change slows down is because during condensation um, heat is released as a result of this process which decreases that rate of temperature change so it takes longer for the temperature to drop because you have a little heat in the atmosphere so we'll be using this wet adiabatic lapse rate to understand a little bit more about cloud formation. 
Okay, so let's look at a few examples of how we use this uh, environmental lapse rate um, in understanding the atmosphere. So here's a question. The environmental lapse rate is 3.8 degrees Fahrenheit per thousand feet. This is something that we measured through the radio sun. If the ground temperature is 68 degrees Fahrenheit, what would be the temperature at 5,400 feet? And that value is picked out because that's the top. Uh, that's the difference between the Albuquerque and the top of the Sandias, uh, Sandia Mountains, which are right outside of Albuquerque. So we're going to use this equation, delta temperature, change in temperature equals change in elevation times the lapse rate. So the change in temperature, we use 5,400 feet for the change in elevation, and here's the lapse rate we're going to use, 3.8, that was given. And you get a change in temperature of 20.5 degrees Fahrenheit. So we subtract that value, whoops, you should have an F there, from the temperature at the surface or at, at the... Um, at the base of the Sandias, and you get the resulting temperature of 47.5 degrees at 5,400 feet. So this is using a lapse rate that we've been given, okay, or that we measured using weather balloon data. So here's an example using just the dry adiabatic lapse rate. Let's take a look at that. So a balloon or air parcel of classroom air is 70 degrees Fahrenheit. If the balloon is brought to the top of the Sandia Mountains in Albuquerque, what will the temperature of the air inside the balloon be? Assume adiabatic cooling. So we're going to assume it's a dry bit of air and that it doesn't exchange heat with the surrounding area. So delta temperature, change in temperature equals delta elevation, change in elevation times lap rate. We plug the values in using uh, our dry adiabatic lap rate to get the change in temperature of 29.2 degrees Fahrenheit. And so our new temperature is 40.8 degrees Fahrenheit. So let's look at an example now where we're using the wet adiabatic lapse rate. And this diagram over here will help us uh, guide us through this process here as a uh, cumulonimbus cloud forming. So a parcel of air is rising and expiring within the cloud shown to the right. At the bottom of the cloud, the temperature of the parcel is 55 degrees Fahrenheit. The parcel rises 3,000 feet to its new location as shown, and notice that the box is greater, so it must be cooling. What is the new temperature of this parcel? So delta temperature equals delta elevation times lapse rate. The change in elevation is 3,000 feet. The wet adiabatic lapse rate is 2.7, so we have a change in temperature of 8.1 degrees Fahrenheit, and so the new temperature at that height is 46.9 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so that is application of the lapse rate. I hope that helps with understanding the graphs, and I'll get to an example of that in a second. Um, now we can apply the lapse rate to understanding whether air is stable or unstable. Now, if you have stable air, that means the weather conditions will be relatively uniform, and you'll be expecting good weather. If it's unstable air, that's when you tend to have precipitation um, occurring and, um, and um, bad weather if you don't like precipitation, which in Oregon we all love precipitation. So let's take a look at examples of this. So if an air parcel is displaced vertically, either up or down, it will change its temperature due to the change in size, either expansion or compression. That's what we've seen in our gas law experiments as well as um, looking at those past examples. An air parcel that is warmer than the surrounding air will rise due to its lesser density. So we also understood that from our experiments. And an air parcel that is colder than the surrounding air will sink due to its increased density. So that's just some basic uh, physical processes in the atmosphere. So stable air is a term given to air that returns to its original position after it's displaced, either up or down. Whereas unstable air is a term given to the air that continues to move in the direction it was displaced. So if it's lighter and it continues to move, then it will be unstable and promote um, unstable weather conditions. So let's look at an example of evaluating stability. So here's the question. The environmental lapse rate this afternoon is 7 degrees Fahrenheit per thousand feet. This is in Albuquerque. A balloon of dry air is filled in Albuquerque. The temperature of the balloon is 70 degrees Fahrenheit. This balloon is then taken up to the tram. They have a big tram up to Sandia Crest, which is quite spectacular. Um, Sandia Crest is 5,400 feet higher than Albuquerque. 
So what the first question is, what is the temperature of the air inside of the balloon at the crest? So the way we do this, and I've just cut and pasted some stuff from some calculations I did, is we need to figure out the temperature uh, on the inside of the balloon at the crest. So we figure out the change in temperature, and then we subtract it from its original temperature to get the new temperature. So 40.8 degrees Fahrenheit is the temperature of the air in the balloon at the top of the Sandia crest. Um, <clears throat> so question B is if this balloon was released, would the balloon sink or rise? Now first we need to calculate the temperature at the top of the Sandias. So at the top, the temperature is 32.2 degrees um, based on the environmental lapse rate. And what we need to do is compare the temperature of the parcel versus the temperature at the crest. And notice that it's higher than the temperature at the crest. So what that means is that the, temp the temperature inside of the balloon is higher and therefore the balloon should continue to rise and the air is unstable. So let's, let's re review those steps again. So first thing we need to do is determine the temperature of the air inside the balloon at 5,000 feet. And we did that just using the dry adiabatic uh, lapse rate. The next thing is we need to use to find out what the temperature at the crest is and we did that by using the environmental lapse rate right here and our final analysis is comparing the temperature at the crest and the temperature in the air parcel. So this is warmer so it's going to continue to rise and therefore the air is unstable. So let's move to another example. In this case, we're going to be using a graph of the environmental lapse rate, similar to what you made. I've made this one much more simple, or Mel Strong did, so that when some of the jogs are not um, um, so uh, uh, dis uh, let's see, what should I say? They're not um, distracting. So this is the sounding um, for the area um, that we're interested in. And here is the question. A balloon of dry air is filled at Albuquerque. It is taken up to Sandia Crest and released. Will the balloon rise or sink when released? Is the air stable or unstable? So let's take a look at the steps. And once again, I just cut and pasted some stuff here. So first of all, we can read right from the sounding that the temperature in Albuquerque at the base is around 74 degrees. We get that from the sounding. Now at the crest, at 5,400 feet, the temperature is approximately 50 degrees Fahrenheit. So we grab that right from the graph. So the balloon will be at 44.8 degrees Fahrenheit when it's taken to the crest, which was calculated using this. So 74 degrees, the starting temperature, minus the change in temperature equals 44.8 degrees. It took a short, shortcut right through here. Now, since 44.8 degrees is less than 52, the balloon will sink back toward Albuquerque, and therefore the air is stable, which means nice weather. So that's it for this uh, almost 13-minute presentation. I hope this helps in terms of finishing uh, the questions for part one, exercise one. Now, exercise two, which is about lapse rate, thermals, and cloud formation, I think it's pretty straightforward because I um, walk you through uh, a lot of the steps or the, or the stuff that Mel did. Um, now, uh, if you have questions, please uh, put them up on the, um, on the discussion board, and I'll try to be more attentive this week about those. Uh, and the only other thing to remember is that in, when you get cloud formation occurs when the relative humidity uh, is 100 percent and that occurs when the temperature, the air temperature equals the dew point temperature. So I hope this helps and thanks a lot.